Aren't they awesome looking? I mean, they turned out really good. So I think you guys are gonna love making these candles. What's up guys, I'm Elena. Welcome to today's video. You guys know I'm a huge fan of these concrete vessels. Everybody out there is making these vessels and I thought, you know, let's take it to the next level. And what do I mean by that? Well, we're going to take these concrete candles and we're going to make them look like teak wood. Yeah, how do we do that? Well, I will show you guys, but first, if you guys aren't already subscribed, make sure you go ahead and do that now because I know a lot of you guys out there, you know who I'm talking about. Well, and let's go ahead and start this video. How did I come up with this idea? Well, I was in Hobby Lobby, walking around, looking for some paint. I stumbled across a box, it was a kit, that was, it had paints in it and I think it was called a leather, and wood paint kit or something. I can't remember the name of it, but it was like $19. And I thought that would be a great idea to paint my candle vessels to look like wood. I thought that would be like the best idea ever. So yeah, that's where I got the idea. And I thought, why not just pick up two colors? All we need is a light color for the underneath the base. And then we just need a dark color to go over the top and create the streaks. So I picked up a buttermilk and an espresso and saved myself quite a bit of money instead of buying that whole kit. So yeah, that's basically how I came up with the idea of making concrete candles look like wood. Okay, you guys know me. I like to prep my area first and I like using this white paper that Amazon has. It's a big roll that you can get. We all know that we don't like to clean up. That's the worst part of either soap making, candle making is the mess. So this definitely has saved me some time because all you do is just fold it all up when you're done and throw it in the trash. Don't even have to wipe down the table or anything like that. So yeah, I absolutely love using this. I've learned from you all that cutting the bottom of the molds has made a huge difference. It's saved my hands. It's saved a lot of time. So little tip there, if you guys are newbies, cut the bottom of the mold, that lip off on the bottom. If you guys go back to one of my other videos, you'll see where I actually used a little knife and cut around and cut that off. But you can use scissors as well. It does work. Um, I've used these molds after the fact several times and not had any issues yet. So fingers crossed that we don't have any issues. Here's everything that we need to get started. You guys have seen in previous videos um, pretty much how I get all this stuff set up. I make sure I have a pair of gloves. You don't want this stuff drying your hands out. It could cause your skin to crack and all that good stuff. So you do not want to get the <laughs> cement all on your skin. Um, and then you're gonna have your water. I prefer using a hot to warm water. It allows the mixture to set up a lot faster. So instead of it taking two to three hours, it might shorten that time to about an hour. So recommend doing that. Um, and also the temperature outside. If it's, you know, if you're doing this outside and it's cold, the temperature is pretty chilly out. Um, it's going to take your concrete to uh, set up a lot slower when it's cold and it could also allow it to crack and not fully cure. So just recommend doing it in a warmer temperature. It usually works out the best. Um, and then you definitely want to <laughs> have a very, very good mask. So in this case, I've picked this up. Um, you know, my husband got this actually, and he, I believe it was at Home Depot. You can pick these up on Amazon. I'll list where you can get this on Amazon if you want it like super fast, you don't feel like waiting. You can get that on Amazon. And of course, my standard molds. I have these also listed in the description. 
and my personal customized logo for the lid. So we're gonna go ahead and start. Normally I use, for one vessel, it's about 10 and a half and that will fill up the vessel and then also my lid. So we're gonna get started. consistency that I prefer. I like it a little more liquidy and like I said with the warm water it's going to help it set up a lot faster. sit overnight just to be on the safe side now let me tell you depending on where you're keeping your vessels and letting them sit and cure I would recommend keeping them in an area where it's maybe 70 degrees or warmer just because when it's cold for some reason I've had problems with this in the past now I used to make a lot of my candles um, in the winter time and couldn't figure out why they were breaking and cracking. So little tip there, do not make concrete candles in temperatures under 70 degrees. So I would say if you're in 40, 50, 60 degree temperature, probably not a very good idea, but I could be wrong, but that's just my experience. I had bad experiences with that, with them cracking after, you know, once you've taken them out of the mold, they start to crumble. coat it once after you've taken them out of the mold let them air dry for about a day or two so the water evaporates out of the concrete and then um, seal coat it I like using the earth safe finish seal coats they're non-toxic and I haven't had any issues with those so I've been pretty happy with it uh, the only thing is you will notice that some of your wax will kind of pull away from the jar. If that doesn't bother you, then fine, You're, it's great. Um, but if it does bother you, then you might have to find another option. But it does happen from time to time. So I purchased this little wicking tool. I can't think of the name of the company where I got it, but I'll look it up, list it down in the description so that way you guys know where you can get this. But this is for the actual 16 ounce U-line jars. These are the straight side, Uline jars and I had them put my logo on the side so they customized it for me and it really was not that expensive but yes this actually fits these vessels so you just set this on top now you really don't even need this so what I did was I took out the centerpiece and it fits the wood wick fits directly in the center of this. It fits perfect and then set that on top and boom, you've got yourself a perfectly centered wick. So my thought process is let's paint the outside of the vessels with a light color, let them dry. It usually takes the paint to dry, I would say just a few minutes. It's not long at all, it dries pretty fast. 
And then what we'll do is we'll come back in with the dark color. We're going to, here's another tip. We're going to wet our paintbrush with a little bit of water, just a little bit, you don't need much, and kind of blot it on a paper towel. Water allows the brown paint kind of loosen up a little bit, showing that white through. So it gives you those streaks of um, like, you know, your wood panel streaks. So that is the key, that is what you want to do. You don't wanna press hard, you wanna just do light strokes and not too many. And that way you get that look. Also, don't forget to go around the top. You want the whole vessel to look like wood. If you wanna paint the inside of the vessel, do the same thing. I didn't use the white just because I didn't feel like anybody was really gonna be looking at the inside of the candle. It's gonna be filled with wax. After you do that, you're going to seal coat it. All right, once I've wicked everything, I am going to fill my vessel. So everything is completely done. Uh, we've got them sealed, we've got them wicked. They're ready to go. We're ready to go ahead and add our wax. I don't know if you guys have one of these. It's been a lifesaver. Now cleaning it, on the other hand, that's another story. But it's nice because you can fill all of your um, candles up with this without spilling. So I like that because before I was using the pitcher and I would literally get it all over the place. I would spill wax everywhere and that stuff is not cheap or the fragrance itself. So it does have a stand and you just set it in there. You pour your wax in there, you take that out and you're going to just basically pour every single candle without spilling. So that is a nice little tool that I picked up. But I did say, it's not very easy to clean. I don't know, if there's another way to clean it, I just, I didn't follow directions, I guess. But anyway, if you guys know, let me know in the comments um, if there's an easier way to clean this thing. I do take a heat gun to it, but that has helped to kind of clean it out. But still, just getting all the pieces apart and everything has been a pain in the butt. Time to get our dust covers ready. I have been using my Cricut for, for a couple years now and I'm liking it more and more now that I use it. It's just one of those tools that's very helpful. It allows me to cut these dust covers out perfect and you guys, I ordered this paper so I wanted to be able to figure out a way how can people reuse these candle vessels because they look like wood and they're just cute. So I thought, you know, having a little planner would be really cool. These are wildflower seed papers and they do come in sheets. So like an eight and a half by 11 sheets. And I think there was like 25 of them I got in a kit on Amazon. And yeah, these are really cool because when you're done using your candle, you clean all the wax out, pull the wick out, and then you're going to fill up your little vessel with some soil and you just lay this paper down in the soil, cover it up and water it really good and put it in a nice little sunny spot and you're gonna have really beautiful wildflowers coming out of your candle vessel. So I thought, you know, what a great way to be able to reuse that vessel and not just throw it away. So we're gonna make our little tiny dust covers and I'll show you guys how we do that. After you get that printed out, then you're going to lay that down on your uh, blue matte paper, the sticky matte paper, and you're going to select printable fabric. And that's what you want to use to cut that out. Now, I normally go from default to more on the cut. So that is kind of like your pressure. And then you just select the little C button and there you go. It's that simple. It starts to cut it for you. I didn't want the candles just to look like just plain wood. I wanted to add something else to it and I wasn't sure what to do. So then I got the idea, let's go ahead and use some vinyl. So we're going to cut out some vinyl and we're gonna use the names of the fragrances. And we're doing three different fragrances today. We're gonna to do a Caribbean teakwood. 
We're gonna do a bourbon barrel. And then we're also going to do Hello Handsome. All of these three fragrances are gonna be great for, you know, they're good for men and women. Probably a good little Father's Day gift. So yes, those are the three fragrances. I'm gonna cut out some vinyl and I will show you guys how we apply the vinyl to the vessels. When doing the vinyl process, it is a little time consuming, I will say, but it's well worth it because it makes these candles look so much more. The process is basically, you're cutting the vinyl out, you've gotta create it all in the, uh, in the Cricut software. You create that, you get your letters cut out on the Cricut machine, then what you're gonna do is you're going to peel all of that back, making sure that you do not like tear anything or pull any of the letters up from the backing. And then after that, you are going to weed it. And that's really the part that takes the longest is weeding it, because you have to go in between every letter and you know the backing may have stuck to some of the insides of the letters, like an A or an O, whatever. And so that's the hardest part doing that. And then what you do is you're going to take a transfer paper, which is a clear, and you're going to lay that on top of your letters. And then you're gonna smooth that out and you're gonna pull that back and hope that all your letters stick to the transfer paper. And then from there, we're going to lay our vessel out where we want it, on whatever side we want, lay that down. And then we're going to take the transfer paper with the vinyl letters on it lay it directly on the candle vessel and push down making sure that it sticks really good to that candle vessel and you pull it back slowly so that way none of the letters pull off with the transfer paper you want them to stick to the vessel now after that another seal coat you don't necessarily have to use the earth safe finish seal coats you can use any other type of seal coat that you prefer and I like using the matte seal coat. Some people can use a gloss. It just depends on how you want your wood to look. So if you want it to be shiny, then use a gloss. If not, use a matte. Then we just go ahead and lay our dust covers down. One thing you do not want to forget is to place the warning labels on the bottom of each candle vessel. And that's it, guys. That's really it. And yeah, and I will show you guys one more little trick. If you do want to go that extra mile, and make them look even better you can paint the lids so with my little lid it has my logo on it i want the lids to be black so i'm going to take a black acrylic paint and i'm going to paint the lid and i'll show you guys how i do that Hope you guys found this information very very helpful i want to see you guys go out and make these candles and let me know in the comments below if you've made these before i want to see you guys this stuff so share your instagram page your youtube whatever share that in the comments below if you guys have made these candles because i want to see how you guys have created yours so Thanks so much, you guys, for watching. I really appreciate it. Make sure you guys subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next one.